Well, good day to you. I uh, wanted to make this video real quick and show you some of the pieces that I picked up in my first video, uh, what they look like when I slice them open and, and took a look at the insides. I find uh, that to be just as interesting, probably more interesting than what they look like on the outside. So the first one that I want to do is this agate, uh, what I what I thought was an agate, agate um, because when I when I spotted it, it was glowing in the sun as um, as I understand agates do, and it doesn't look like anything special on the outside but I suspected that there was some sort of pattern on the inside and so when I finally sliced it open I was not disappointed it, it looks really nice on the inside and I've set about to make some cabochons out of these three slices but uh, maybe I'll show you uh, the, the details of that in a later video but right now um, just enjoy this the next one that I uh, sliced was this uh, quartz and jasper mix, uh, red and clear. And, um, you know, mo upon immediately upon slicing it, I could tell that it was a softer material and it, it wasn't agate material. It was uh, quartz, um, kind of partially crystallized quartz with jasper mixed in but um, when I opened it up I was not disappointed I was very pleased with it so I ended up slicing up the whole thing a bit crumbly on the outside it's a softer material um, but uh, I love the pattern I love the the color there and I don't know what I'm gonna do with this quite yet but I'll set the slices aside and and do something with it later at a, at a later time. And the third piece that I'm going to show you is this black piece. Again, on the outside it looks like nothing real special, um, but I suspected that on the inside that there might be something going on, and again, I, I was uh, real pleased. It was, you know, it's nothing to, to write home about. And get all too excited about it but at the same time it it looks nice with the the green veining and some some red or rust color in there as well and uh, so we'll do something with that eventually and the next piece um, is this coral this is the piece that I was really um, rather excited to find. I did not expect it and petrified coral is one of uh, one of my more favorite stones. Um, and like I mentioned this is petrified with silica as opposed with limestone in limestone so the potential is there for it to become uh, made into cabochons or something like that. Um, so I uh, when I sliced it open and uh, I was pleasantly, uh, I, I expected this, but it was a, a pleasant thing to see that the pattern did transfer throughout the, the rock. Uh, the grayer portions are a little bit duller and more muted than the, the white portions, but still you can, uh, you can see the honeycomb pattern in there, and I was real pleased with that. This, uh, smaller piece here I just intended I, I noticed some lines in the side of it and I just intended to um, grind away at the sides of it and get a clearer look at what it uh, looked like through the sides of it but the more I looked at this piece especially the the other ends of this piece I kind of theorized that this could be another piece of petrified coral, just a smaller, smaller version. And so I ground away at it, and eventually I would grind away at the top of it, and it's, it's barely visible, but if you 
um, look under magnification at the, the ground away top of it, the white portion, you can see that same honeycomb pattern that is so typical to uh, petrified coral. So just another piece, and I uh, was pleased with that. Um, this next piece is a rather large piece, about the size of your fist, maybe a certainly longer than a fist, my fist, but about the size of my fist. And I knew that the, the fossils were only on one side of it, so I uh, decided to uh, slice it kind of down the middle, close to the, to the fossils to see, just to confirm that nothing was going on in the inside. And I expected it to be very plain on the inside, and I was uh, pleased to see that it had kind of a, a light purple or a lavender color on the inside. So instead of discarding the half that didn't have any fossils, I just set it aside for a later project when I might, not, uh, when I might want uh, something of that color. And then I sliced up uh, the the other half. I was able to get three slices out of it. And you can see here the the patterns and the, the various fossils, a lot of crinoid stems. And uh, I was really pleased with uh, how that turned out and how that looks. And so we'll do something with that eventually. Um... The next one uh, that I didn't think I would cut up uh, was this uh, blue, bluish quartz. Um, but I got to looking at that and I realized that I could maybe slice a little bit off the very end and polish it and at least get a glimpse of what it looked like polished. And once I sliced, sliced the tip off the very end, um, I realized that this was not just a, a, a low-quality crumbly quartz, but it was actually an agate. It was very dense, very hard stone. And at that point, I decided to save the two larger crystal cavities and sacrifice the smaller ones and slice up about half of the stone. And as you could see in those earlier pictures, it was... Um, it was cracked and, and it actually fell apart into three or four pieces when I sliced it in half, but I was able to um, take a couple of those larger pieces and slice them up. And under the lighting inside, it looks more, again, kind of a light purple as opposed to a blue, and I wonder if that's um, the lighting as opposed to the actual stone itself. I haven't taken it back outside to look at it under natural lighting, but but still there's this uh, really nice uh, translucent colored agate that I have a few small slices that I'll do something with eventually. And the last two pieces that I want to show you are a couple of pieces of what uh, at a casual glance would look like just a, a yellow jasper. This first piece here, um, I picked it up and kept it because I noticed there was some quartz spots in there that looked like uh, they were fossils um, uh, in, the, in the yellow jasper. And as it turns out, I, you know, I ground away at the side, sides of it to to expose these and make them clearer. And as it turns out, it wasn't just a, a plain yellow jasper. The jasper itself had kind of an interesting pattern to it. But indeed, um, they were crinoid stems that were, um, I, I'm guessing, completely... Uh, replaced with silica because they're clear um, the, it's not like the some of the others or the previous one that had the white crinoid stems in it but uh, there's a few pictures of what it looked like ground away um, 
And then the last piece, I didn't even show the picking up of this piece and and uh, or the grinding of it. Um, I picked it up because I saw these uh, quartz lines coming out of it, and I thought, hmm, I'll take it home, grind away at it, and see if it it shows anything. It, they just looked like lines to me. And as I ground away on the, the side, you know, I exposed that, yes, they're, they're clear quartz, just like the previous piece. But then when I turned it over and ground away at the end, I exposed this pattern. And this blew me away. I didn't have a clue. I, I still don't have a clue what this is. If anybody out there knows what this is, um, feel free to leave a comment. Um, but evidently this is the end view of something that's that's longer and I was just seeing the side view um, when I first picked up the stone but this this one particularly fascinates me because I don't it, probably because I just don't know what it is um, but that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed the uh, more in-depth view of the pieces that I picked up this last time and um, please keep in touch because I have a couple more videos in the making that I'll be posting in the near future. Thanks for watching. Bye.